In this short video tutorial, we're going to learn about SMART's online features included in the SMART Learning Suite. How teachers can upload lessons that they have, edit them, including building SMART Lab content and Response 2.0 content online in the SMART Suite. We're going to see how they can share the content and then finally how students will access that content on their own. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this notebook file. And here behind it, I am on the Smart Learning Suite. One thing I'd like to point out before we get started, the web address for the first time you go to the Smart Learning Suite is suite.smarttech.com. So over on the right hand side of my screen, I have two options. I can sign into an existing account if I've set it up, or I can click to sign up for free. I'm going to log into my account in just a moment, but I do want to show you the options when you click to sign up. When you choose to sign up, we do encourage you to sign in with Google. This will accomplish a few things. Number one, you won't have to remember another password because it will be the same password that you use for your AACPS account. And it will ensure that your account is activated as a part of our district license instead of you getting some kind of a message that you don't have the correct license to get all of the features. So click sign in with Google, put in your full AACPS email address, and then it will pull in your credentials from that account. I'm going to go back and click sign in and continue with the account that has already been created. So it takes just a moment to log into the Smart Suite. And then you'll see here on my dashboard or in the center of the page, I have a variety of lessons that I have uploaded in the past. And as I hover over each of them, I get the option to start them or deliver them to my students. And we'll see that option in a few minutes. Everything is added to the Smart Learning Suite from the green plus sign in the upper left hand corner. When you click on your plus sign, you have a variety of options available to you. You can upload a file that you have already created, meaning a smart notebook file, a PDF, or a PowerPoint, or in the bottom left you can create a smart lab activity on the smart suite, and in the bottom right you can create a response 2.0 assessment. One of the brand new features that you can expect to find with the Smart Learning Suite is integration with Google Drive. So I'm going to leave the Smart Learning Suite for a moment and I'm going to go to my Google Drive account. And then just like I was going to create something brand new here in Google Drive, I'm going to click on my New button and go down to More. And what has recently been added here in this menu, and if I click on Smart Learning Suite from my Google Drive, what it will prompt me to do is sign in to my Smart Learning Suite account so that I can sync up my Smart Learning Suite with Google Drive. And when you do that, it adds an additional button here that allows you to import into your Smart Learning Suite from your Google Drive. And in fact, once you add this, it changes the way that you access your files the next time you go to the Smart Learning Suite. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to go ahead and close out of everything except my class link here. And then from my class link, I'm going to click to access the Smart Learning Suite again. And this time, when the Smart Learning Suite loads, it's going to say, hey, we noticed that you've been using Google Drive. Would you prefer to go to Google Drive instead of coming to this dashboard again in the future? Now, if I don't want to go to my Google Drive, if I want to go back to the green plus sign in the upper left hand corner and create a new Smart Lab activity or something like that that we've already seen under that option, then I can choose the option on the left that says let me in anyway. But if I want to be able to open a Smart Notebook or again import in a PowerPoint or a PDF that I already have saved on my Google Drive, then instead of coming to the Smart Learning Suite, I can select to be taken to my Google Drive instead. Then what you'll find is if you're on your Google Drive and you go to open a Smart Notebook file that you have stored somewhere here, like I have one here in my starred area, when you double click, it opens in the preview window that we're pretty familiar with if we try to open something like a PowerPoint or a PDF on your Google Drive. And then in the Open With option here at the top in the drop down, you'll see Smart Learning Suite as an option. And you can select, and it takes you over to the Smart Learning Suite and opens up that file. 
So here we have that short smart notebook file opened up. But let's go back to our Google Drive and talk about one more scenario. One of the biggest benefits with integrating your Google Drive is the ability to open a Google file in your smart learning suite if you choose. So how does that work? Because normally if I'm here on my Google Drive and I double click to open something like this Google Doc, it's going to open in the Google Docs app instead of prompting me to go to the Smart Learning Suite where I intended to open this. But instead of double clicking to open it, if I right click on it and choose Open With, in addition to the native program that was created in Google Docs, my sl Smart Learning Suite is now one of my options and I can click to select and just like it did with the Smart Notebook file that I had a moment ago, it will open that Google document in the Smart Learning Suite as well. So you still have the option to go through the Smart Learning Suite to upload files that you have saved somewhere on your desktop or your H drive, but now you have this new integrated feature with Google Drive where it allows you to open any of your Google files in the Smart Learning Suite as well. So now that we've talked about the different options to open a variety of different file types in the Smart Learning Suite, let's talk about why you might want to do that. Let's talk about how this platform would treat these files so that you'll know the benefits of working with not only a Smart Notebook file, but those other file types as well. So we're going to begin with an example of a Smart Notebook file here on the Smart Learning Suite. So on the left hand side we have our page preview option where you can see all of the pages in the file and then in the main workspace in the center we're looking at page number one. We even have an option down here at the bottom to do what SMART calls convert this page to an activity. When we click on this we have two options for the types of activities. We can turn this into an individual handout which would allow each student in our class to work on this page on their own, meaning they wouldn't see each other's work on this page, or we can make the page into a collaborative workspace activity. If we choose to make it a collaborative workspace, we have the option to share this page with the whole class so that they can all work together or to establish small groups which would let the students only work with in their group and only see the changes made by other group members. The other option that we have to make changes to this file in this editing window is from the blue plus sign in the lower left hand corner and that gives me the option to add those response 2.0 assessment features or add a new smart lab activity to this file. If I don't need to make any changes to the file or I have finished making the changes that I need, in the upper left hand corner I have the button to finish editing which opens up my file ready for me to share it with my students. And if I click on the people icon in the upper left, it tells me to have my students go to the website hellosmart.com and then join my lesson using this teacher code. And my teacher code will remain the same on the Smart Learning Suite. A couple of other options I have when I'm sharing this lesson is to choose whether or not I want the lesson to be teacher paced, meaning if I move to page two, all of the students in my class would move to page two as well, or do I want it to be self paced, meaning that the students can work on whatever page they are comfortable working on and they don't have to be dependent on their classmates to stay on a page. There are a couple of additional tools over here on my toolbar like a pen that allows me to choose a variety of different colors here or an eraser that allows me to choose different sizes in order to remove any ink that I've added. The Smart Learning Suite does not have all of the tools that you have in the desktop version of Smart Notebook. Because of that, what we really recommend at this time is that the creation of your Smart Notebook files still happens in your desktop version of Notebook. But the benefit to bringing them up to the Smart Learning Suite is the ability to share them online, to choose things like individual handouts, collaborative workspace, to have students working on it from home, Home and so on. And because we're online, we're not dependent on students having installed the Smart Notebook software if they're working at home because it will work on any device as long as they can get to the web. And for in school, that means the students can work in Smart Notebook on the Chromebooks.
So now let's switch over to a student view and have the student join this particular lesson so that we can take a look at the options that students will have. So I'm going to pull out this information, make sure that I have access to this teacher code, and then I'm going to switch over to a student view. So I'm having the student sign in to the teacher's lesson and it loads for me in a view only option right now. The student can click using the arrows in the lower left hand corner to see all of the pages in the file. If they come to any Smart Lab activities or Smart Response 2.0 assessments, they have the ability to engage with those. But for the informational pages where there is text and images, they have no pens, they have no capability to interact with the content at all. However, if we switch back over to the teacher view for a moment, that's where options like turning this into an individual activity or collaborative workspace will change the student experience. So if I click on the option to have an individual handout activity and then switch back over to the student's view again, back on page one where the teacher selected to make this an individual handout, I now have a start button. And when I start the handout activity, in addition to the page itself loading here in the workspace, I now have a toolbar on the left hand side that includes not only pens in a variety of colors, an eraser to remove any pen if I need to, I have the ability to add an image by doing a web link, or I can add text to the workspace here by clicking to add a text box. I have options to change the font, the style, the color, and so on, or an option to reset the page, meaning undo all of the additions or changes that I have made to it. If I don't want to, I can click cancel, or if I do in fact want to remove everything, I can click reset. I'm going to cancel out of this because I want you to see how the teacher accesses and sees the changes that I have made to the file. So once again, let's switch back to a teacher view. So right here in the handout activity, the teacher has the student listed. And when they click on the student, they will see exactly the work that the student did in the individual handout. So I only have one student in this class at the moment, so my roster is not very impressive. But if you had your entire list of students signed into the activity, they would all be listed here on this dashboard and you could click on any student in order to see the work that they had done. When finished with the activity, if the teacher clicks on the gear icon here on the left hand side, they can click end and then it would stop the activity for the student as well. Let's go ahead and move forward to the next page and let's see the option for the teacher to run the other type of activity, the collaborative activity. So once again, I'm going to click on my people icon up here. I'm on a different page in the file, so I get the options again here at the bottom to do an individual handout or a collaborative workspace. We're going to choose collaborative this time and then it gives me that option to put all of my students on one team or to make separate teams for them. Now again I only have one student in this class so we're only seeing that one option but there would be a second button to create the teams if I had multiple students. So I'm going to go ahead and select that I do want that one student to be on just one team and the activity is going to load and I have the ability to add content just the way we saw for our student a moment ago. So let's go ahead and switch over to the student view again and let's have our student move forward to page two and this is what they'll see when they are invited to that collaborative, that workspace activity. So the student will click to start or resume the activity and it loads for them Again, we can use things like the pens in order to make changes, and everybody on my team would be able to see the changes that I have made here, including my teacher. So let's switch back over to the teacher view, and you'll see that the teacher can see that ink stroke that the student made. So let's add our own ink to what the student did, and once again, take a look at the student's view. And because it is collaborative, the teacher is a part of the group as well. So the students will be able to see all of the work that they add to the page, the teacher will be able to see it, and the students will be able to see what the teacher adds as well. 
It's important to note that in both the individual handout activity as well as the collaborative workspace that when the teacher chooses that activity type it is only for that one page in the smart notebook file. So here we are in the student view still and if the student moves on to the next page in the file they immediately lose that interactive toolbar that they had on the left hand side with the pens because that was only available on that collaborative workspace page. If we go back to the collaborative workspace and click on resume, we get back the ability to edit and contribute to this file. Similarly, if we go back to the first page, because the teacher has clicked end on the individual handout activity, the student has no access to it at all. So even though the teacher shared the entire file with the students, they only gave them editing permissions or interactive capabilities when they chose the individual handout activity or the collaborative workspace activity. So let's go ahead and switch back over to our teacher view and end that activity. Once again, the teacher will click on the gear on the left hand side and choose end to stop the collaborative activity. So now let's go back and see how the Smart Learning Suite treats a non-Smart Notebook file. Let's take a look at that document, that Google Doc, that we imported into the Learning Suite previously in the video. So I'm going to click back on that, and we'll see here where it's open in the editing window in the Smart Learning Suite that basically it treats this like it were a page in a Smart Notebook file. We have the same option at the bottom here to convert this to an activity, make it an individual handout so that the students could ink on it, mark it up, maybe do some peer editing in the collaborative workspace activity and we also have the plus sign in the bottom left to add an assessment that might follow this reading excerpt or even a smart lab activity so that the students could practice with the content. If we've made the changes that we need or decided we don't need to make any changes we have that same option to click finish editing and it takes us into the file ready to share it with our students with exactly the same options that we had for our Smart Notebook file. When we invite our students to it, we get the ability to make it an individual handout here or collaborative workspace activity if we hadn't already done that. We can choose teacher paste or student paste and then we have the same basic toolbar here with the pens to add ink annotations, the eraser to make changes for those, and the arrows to move forward or backward if the document were longer than this and displayed over multiple pages. Something that's important to take a look at now is what's been going on in our Google Drive when we opened these files from where they were stored there. So if we go back to our Google Drive, we can see that there are a few files that we've opened as a demonstration during this video here. Here we have this new features.notebook and above it we have a new version of this file. It's newfeatures.sls or Smart Learning Suite. The same thing happened when we imported in that lab activities notebook and when we imported in that uh, Word or Google document version. Each of those files got copied into a .sls or Smart Learning Suite version. And the nice thing about that is if I want to open the same file that I added into the Smart Learning Suite previously, instead of going back and opening this .notebook or that Google Doc, if I open the .sls version, it will contain and have saved any of the changes that I made to this file. So every time you import in a file from your Google Drive, regardless of what type of file it is, when it converts and saves as a .sls, that would be the version that you would want to continue to open in the future if you want to be able to see the changes, additions that you made while you were in the Smart Learning Suite. So let's start wrapping up this video on the Smart Learning Suite. I want to share one last big benefit that comes from this integration with Google Drive. And that is if a teacher wants to share a Smart Notebook file with their students, because it's integrated with Google Drive, one of the benefits and options that they now have is the ability to share that through Google Classroom without needing to put it in as an attachment. But rather they can link to it just like they can link to anything else that lives in their Google Drive. So if I open my test class here as an example, and go to create a classwork assignment. When I search my Google Drive, it will find my .sls files just like it will find anything else that is saved on my Google Drive and I can add that as a link 
to give the file to my students. When they open this file, they will get the option to open it in the Smart Learning Suite and then have all of the same options that we've seen throughout the video with the individual handouts, the collaborative workspace, and so on for the teachers and students. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you've learned a lot about the new features available in the Smart Learning Suite.